Hi right, guys. It is a lovely summer night there in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. There, I should say lightning bugs in a jar farm. The lightning bug show cranking up here. It is after 10 o'clock at night here on Friday. July 24th, somewhere around there. So anyway, I am doing what I do every Friday. And that is my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler with the boys and the boys and girls at mongabay.com this week. And I noticed that... Uh, Red has titled, I, I, you know, I guess the latest journalist has been uh, assassinated down there in the Amazon this week. Uh, and so Red has titled his weekly uh, newsletter, The War on Journalists and Environmental Defenders in the Amazon Continues. And... This reminded me of back when, uh, in 2009, when I was down in the Peruvian Amazon rainforest writing my book called Peruvian Plunge. Peruvian Plunge, you can still find that on, uh, I think at Barnes and & Noble and Lulu.com if you want to read my book that I wrote. Uh, when I was down there talking about Hunt Oil Company, these uh, these wildcatter oil drillers from Texas down there in the middle of a <clears throat> of an Amazon Indian reserve, looking for oil and gas, uh, <laughs> and I remember Rhett. I was writing an article for Manga Bay about my what was going on down there, and Rhett was getting nervous that I was going to get my ass killed. And uh, so I actually found this email. I, I never erase my emails. So this email is from July 30th, 2009. <coughs> I told uh, Rhett from Peru. I am sitting next to a Hunt Oil executive as I write this on my last day in the Mother of God. So as far as I'm concerned, you can publish it tomorrow when my honky ass is on a bus to Cusco. And Rat's response uh, <laughs> 13 years ago to me was, Hi Sam. I'm glad to hear you made it out of the forest safely. With regards to the editorial, do you want to post it under a pseudonym to protect yourself? Yeah, so anyway, uh, Rhett was nervous about using my real name, Sam Mitchell, so we came up with a pseudonym. Ah. Uh, you can go on if you really want to find out and if you want to read my account of that, uh, my adventures in Peru, you can find out what the pseudonym that we came up with for Sam Mitchell. But anyway, blast from the past, uh, how dots get connected. And here we are. Good Lord, 13 years later, the war on journalists and environmental defenders in the Amazon continues. This is actually getting some mainstream media attention this week. Shockingly, uh, Brazilian police reported on June 15th that they had found the bodies believed to be those of Brazilian indigenous defender Bruno Pereira and British journalist Dom Phillips deep in the western Amazon. The bodies were found not far from where the 
where the pair disappeared on June 5th in the Valle do Havare region, considered the most violent region of Brazil where criminal groups vie to seize land occupied by indigenous and traditional communities. Similar conflicts occur all over the Amazon, with some land grabbers admitting that they will use violent methods to achieve their goals. And then they have a commentary by whoever Carla Mendez is. Um, journalists in Brazil and around the world are devastated about the tragic end of a 10-day search for British journalist Dom Phillips and indigenous advocate Bruno Pereira in the Amazon rainforest near the Brazil-Peru border. I was on the Peru side, but this is right in the same neighborhood where I was down there. Um, bodies believed to be theirs were found after a huge outcry against the federal government's inaction following their disappearance. The murders of Dom and Bruno were emblematic of the plight of journalists across Latin America as violence against both journalists and activists in the region escalates. Yes. It also raises an alarm for the need to protect reporters as we report on environmental crime from nature's front lines. There you go. But these crimes will not stop us exposing wrongdoing across Brazil and Peru and everywhere else down there. Uh, is more necessary than ever now. Yes. Anyway, so, uh, you know, this is no joke, guys. Uh, good Lord, I remember when I went back to Salvation Peru, there were, uh, there were posters all over town about me that were posted by Hunt Oil Company from Texas. Uh, basically talking about if anybody sp spotted me to turn me in to hunt. This, this is no joke. I'm not making this up. Uh, the last picture I got leaving Salvation Peru uh, was a picture of a hunt oil worker who was an Amazon Indian taking a picture of... I was taking a picture of him taking a picture of me to turn in to Hunt Oil Company so I could get my ass killed. But anyway, I can see how much has changed in the last 13 years. Let's see what else has not changed in the last 13 years. How about this? Beyond boundaries, Earth's water cycle is being bent to the breaking point. The hydrological cycle is a fundamental natural process for keeping Earth's operating system intact. Humanity and civilization are intimately dependent on the water cycle, but we, meaning humans, have manipulated it vastly and destructively to suit our needs. We don't yet know the full global implications of human modifications to the water cycle. We do know such changes could lead to huge shifts in Earth's systems threatening life as it exists. Researchers are asking where and how they can measure change to determine if the water cycle is being pushed to the breaking point. Yes. 
Recent research has indicated that modifications to the water cycle are now causing earth system destabilization at a scale that modern civilization might not have ever faced. The cat is really interested in the cat. Are you fascinated by the, uh, the cat might have a lightning bug. Do you have a lightning bug? Meow. Yes, you tell that lightning bug like that. Meow. Yes. All right. We have a lightning bug uh, confrontation with the, uh, don't you, I know, you looked at me like you're pissing on my door, cat. Anyway, where was I? Uh, where was I? Modifications to the water cycle are now causing earth system destabilization at a scale that modern civilization might not have ever faced. This is already playing out in extreme weather events and long-term slow onset climate alterations with repercussions we do not yet understand. There are no easy or simple solutions. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, I anybody who wants to see what this article is talking about needs to go about 50 feet from where I'm sitting, where, uh, good God, uh, how much time, energy, and money have I spent uh, on the <clears throat> water cycle at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I mean, guys, we're screwed. Uh, anyway... Uh, you, you, you know, I love it, you, you, you know, Reddy, you know, he, he, he's talking all about how environmental journalists are getting killed everywhere they go, and, and then he uh, announces that Manga Bay is establishing a fellowship program from young and aspiring journalists from the world's biodiversity hotspots. There you go, Rat. That, that is really a way to get young and aspiring journalists to report on and talk about how they'll get a damn bullet in their head. Anyway, that's that's some real, I, I think that was prob, this is probably not the best week to announce your, uh, your scholarship or whatever that is. Anyway, good Lord, guys. Uh, I'm only going to touch on a few of these. Uh, anyway, let's move down a little, let's move down a little deeper, uh, into the cavalcade of, I, I love this one, uh, <laughs> you know, this is why every week I have to sit here and say this is why I love Rhett Butler. If it was not for Rhett Butler, I would never have figured this out on my own. This is why that man, you know, why every week I'm coming out, I never would have figured this out on my own without Rep Butler explaining to me. Okay, would you believe that marine governance in Indonesia pursues exploitation over sustainability? Yes, I, 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 I love this, this term, marine spatial planning. What the hell does, mar, what mar, marine spatial planning? Okay, what, what they're talking about is what to do with the oceans around Indonesia. Okay, marine spatial planning in Indonesia over the past 300 years has historically and systematically supported profit-oriented activities at the cost 
of the ocean ecosystem and coastal communi communities, a recent paper says. Wow. Researchers found that little had changed despite decades of attempts to reform marine governments to support more sustainable uses of sea resources in Indonesia. They also found that coastal communities, traditional and small-scale fishers, had lost much of their control and influence over marine areas, while ruling elites at the national level gradually gained more of it. Yes, the fisheries sector has long been important to the food security of Indonesia. Uh, I, I don't know why they're limiting this to marine governance. A everything they just said here could also be said uh, uh, about the land governance. And why are they limiting this to Indonesia? This story right here, let's, let's reword the story. Okay, we're going to reword this story. Okay. Planetary governance on land and sea across the entire planet pursues exploitation over sustainability. Okay. Governance over oceans and land areas over the past 3,000 years has historically and systematically supported profit-oriented activities at the cost of ecosystems and local communities, a recent paper says. Researchers found that nothing has changed despite centuries, if not millennia, of attempts to reform governance to support more sustainable use of sea and land resources on every corner of the planet. All right. Okay from Indonesia and the entire planet. All right, let's go to Brazil. There you go, this, this is a classic uh, Manga Bay headline. This is, a, you know, uh, probably where a bunch of journalists are getting run over by trains. For Brazilian communities along a mining railway, impacts outweigh any benefits. <clears throat> In Brazil's Maranhão state, which has the lowest household income in Brazil, communities face the impacts of a railroad built and operated around the clock by the mining corporation Vale. Yes, the Carajas Railroad runs 554 miles from the world's largest, the world's largest, the biggest open pit iron ore mine on the planet to the port, to this port on Brazil's Atlantic coast contributing to Vale's record $24 billion, $24 billion profit in 2021. Meanwhile, residents living near the railroad report a long history of health problems, structural damage to their houses, don't forget people being hit by mining trains, deaths, and 
a lack of dialogue with the company. Yes, with their grievances ignored and their freedom of movement curtailed, these impoverished communities say they don't see the benefits from the mining money. Yes, do you think the, uh, I'm sure the local, uh, the little peons getting run over by the train are not seeing those benefits of that $24 billion, which I think is another, uh, just a subset of the story. Governance around the planet pursues exploitation over sustainability. They don't give a damn. Oh, come on, guys. This is not that hard. Okay? They will run you over with a train. They will put a bullet through your head and turn you into catfish bait at the bottom of the Amazon River. They do not care. They want the money. They will kill you to get you out of the way and to make that moolah. Uh, Red has been trying to explain this for about 24 years. Yes, uh, there we go. But of course, Rhett Butler, you know, this man, this man, uh, more than any other human being on the planet, week after week, year after year, decade after decade, sending out this laundry list of how doom, and then he still comes up with this uh, hopium crap. Here we go. Yes. <clears throat> Indonesian palm oil audit. A chance to clean up a very dirty industry. Yes. All right. The Indonesian government plans to audit all palm oil comp companies operating in the country. Yes. Experts attribute the palm oil crisis in Indonesia to the fact that the country's palm oil industry is dominated by a small number of big companies. Yes. These few companies have large concessions in excess of the limit imposed by the government, allowing them to wield outsized power to dictate prices, policies, and supplies. All right, but the Indonesian government is going to audit. We're going to have the foxes auditing the hen house. Oh, yeah. Okay, good God, guys. I am not even at the halfway point. Uh, here is some article about the online trade of West African birds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I love this sentence. In general, <laughs> and now, now, now did, did, when Rhett printed this, did he have a straight face? When Rhett Butler printed this sentence, in general, very little is known about wild birds in West Africa. So it is difficult to assess whether the trade in certain species of West African wild birds is sustainable. Yes, it is difficult to assess whether the trade in certain species of West African birds is sustainable. There is not a goddamn thing that is difficult to assess 
whether the goddamn trade in West African birds is sustainable. Uh, there, there, there is no argument here, okay? Rhett knows damn well that there is no argument here. Uh, okay, here we have rice farming in Bangladesh. Oh, Jesus. I've uh, got a couple of articles from Costa Rica. Uh, all right. I noticed that Elon Musk himself not uh, showing up. But let's, what is Tesla Motor Company up to this week? Nickel, Tesla, and two decades of environmental activism. All right. Nickel mining in New Caledonia, a French overseas territory in the South Pacific, is receiving international attention after the electrical vehicle giant Tesla recently invested in its largest mine. The mine has been plagued by environmental and social issues for the last decade. It is related to five chemical spills. Yes, so far, uh, two articles, all eyes on Tesla as it invests in a troubled nickel mine. Yes, yes. American manufacturing giant Tesla invested in New Caledonia's Goro mine, raising local expectations that international scrutiny and the mine's new owners, can you say Elon Musk, could help the plant overcome past environmental mismanagement issues and social woes. Yes. You save the planet, Elon Musk. Okay, we were just talking about wild birds in West Africa. What is going on with wild birds in Nepal? Winter sanctuary in Nepal proves a killing field for yellow-breasted buntings. Tens of thousands of yellow-breasted buntings. Now, my idea of a bunting, I mean, I'm thinking of painted buntings and indigo buntings. They're about this big. There's got maybe... There might be half the meat of a chicken wing on an entire bunting. Tens of thousands of yellow-breasted buntings are being killed and eaten in Nepal every winter, according to an ornithologist. The critically endangered species is already severely threatened in its range countries where it is also consumed as a delicacy. The popularity of the bird's meat stems from a myth that it warms the body in winter and has an aphrodisiac effect. Yes. Kiss goodbye the yellow breasted bunting. Okay, let's go over. Where the hell is this? Honduras. Let's see what the planet eaters are up to in Honduras. Mining company destroys indigenous cemetery during expansion in Honduras. Indigenous residents living near the San Andreas mine in western Honduras were devastated to learn that a centuries-old cemetery was dug up in the middle of the night 
making it nearly impossible for some families to even find their loved ones. Yes, the mass exhumations come after nearly a decade of community level and legal battles uh, between, you know, the locals and the planet eaters. Uh, the controversy highlights the fact that the Honduran national government, government has not yet upheld its promise to close open pit mining concessions. I think that uh, we were talking, when was it, a year or two ago, that Honduras, Honduras, are you following me? Let's all say Honduras. I've been to Honduras. Honduras is one big, doesn't it go from sea to shining sea? Honduras is an open pit mine, okay? The entire country is one big open pit mine. Yes, Honduras' promise to close open pit mining concessions. Yes. Okay, from Honduras to the entire European Union. There you go. What's going on with the European Union this week? Of course, this is all over the mainstream media. Like every story in Manga Bay, you, you know, I'm sure this is the, the biggest story on the planet of what's going on in Europe this week. EU's anti-deforestation bill leaves out critical ecosystems. New regulations proposed by the European Commission aim to reduce the import of commodities that cause deforestation and forest degradation abroad. But, according to a new report commissioned by the EU Greens, the narrow definition of forest and deforestation in the revised legislation would not protect ecosystems in South America where European demands for commodities such as soy and beef create high deforestation risk. Here you go. Anyway, it is all in the semantics. Um, I, I love this. A tale of successes and new challenges in Senegal. I'm sure a, a, any tale of successes, meaning environmental and conservation successes, in Senegal. Yes, I bet that would be the shortest tale in the book. Any, anyway, all right, here is technology saving the planet. Okay, here is a place where I have spent uh, a lot of time in my own life uh, this is Corcovado National Park in Costa Rica. As I'm glad to see Costa Rica getting some bad press. It's about time for Costa Rica to get some bad press to cut the crap about Costa Rica. Miners, drug traffickers, and loggers is Costa Rica's Corcovado National Park on the verge of collapse. Extreme polarization about what is going on in Costa Rica's Corcovado National Park 
has led to accusations of corruption, negligence, media manipulation, fights for control of the area's management, and who does and does not receive funds from international donors. The park suffers from gold mining, hunting, logging, and drug trafficking. But officials, you know, meaning Costa Rican officials, scientists, and NGOs have very different views on how badly these things are impacting the health of the park. Yes, we all know what's going on there. From uh, all right, guys, I realize I'm talking to myself. Uh, anyway, we're just going to do one more. We're going to end up, we're going to go from Costa Rica to Sweden. Let's wind up in Sweden. All right, asking a question. How sustainable is Sweden's forestry? How, I'm sorry, how un- sustainable is Sweden's forestry. The, they actually answer the question in this headline, very. It is very unsustainable. All right. Finally, we have Rhett answering his own question. Sweden has a gigantic forest products industry and its National Forestry Agency claims that their operations to be the, the most sustainable forestry practices in the world. However, the truth on the ground is that Sweden's forest industry relies heavily on clear-cutting natural forests, many of which are quite old and replanting them with monocultures of trees, some of which are non-native. This is uh, one of these tree huggers in Sweden whose name I cannot pronounce. Quote, only 3%, 3% of Sweden's forestry does not involve clear-cutting that should be pretty shocking to anyone who hears it, given Sweden's reputation as a leader of so-called green practices. Yes, this is made possible in part by the Swedish forestry model which allows the companies, you know, the timber companies, to police their own practices, otherwise the fox, guarding the hen house, toward ensuring good ecological and social outcomes, which most of the time don't happen. There you go. Imagine that when you let planet-eating corporations police their own practices toward ensuring good ecological and social outcomes, most of the time, they don't happen. Wow! Anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but uh, I understand I've been talking to myself for about 20 minutes. And the little dog has heard enough, and he says, Pop, it's goddamn going on 11 o'clock at night. Get me out of here, out to my tiny house, because I want to go to bed. You get up and get some chippies tomorrow. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, 
enjoy your own uh, lightning bug show while you still can. Ugh. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Did you survive another Manga Bay rant? Is it pop? Get me off of this table. Get me off of this table. Rawr, <laughs> 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 <laughs>